Hello and welcome to Tech Report. On this episode, I'll be showing you how to set up your own whole home DVR system using just a PC and free software. I'll also be walking through the installation steps required to install the XBMC Media Center on both a PC and an embedded device. If you are up to date with the latest and greatest in consumer technology, then you are likely familiar with the Whole Home DVR. A Whole Home DVR is the concept of having a single television tuner, or array of television tuners, at a centralized location feeding all the television sets throughout the home. The obvious advantage of this is that if a recording is made on any single TV in the house, it can then be played back on any other TV without having to make multiple recordings. Whole home DVR systems are available commercially from many television providers, including Shaw Cable, Bell TV, Direct TV, and Dish Network. However, these commercially available whole home DVRs are uncustomizable and offer few options for modification or expansion of the system. In this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to show you how to use an old PC and Next PVR in order to create your own whole home DVR uh, application DIY style. Stay tuned. The first thing you will need is a positive attitude and a willingness to experiment with computers, both in hardware and in software. Previous experience with the Windows or Linux command lines, along with experience of installing operating systems, is also an asset. In terms of the hardware for this project, there are three distinct components you must consider. First is the media server, the second are the media clients, and the third is the network that connects them. I'm going to talk about each one briefly. In terms of your media server, I would recommend using a PC with at least a dual core processor and 4 gigs of RAM. I would also suggest that you load your server up with plenty of storage space, say 500 gigabytes or 1 terabyte, so that you can store plenty of recorded programs. You will also need to load up your server with TV tuners. And this might be the trickiest part for some. The TV tuners that you're going to load up into your server depends on the kind of TV that you watch. If you watch a lot of free-to-air television using a satellite dish to receive unencrypted broadcasts, then you will want to install a free-to-air tuner in your PC. If you use analog cable or a traditional over-the-air antenna to receive television, then you'll want to install a standard over-the-air or cable uh, tuner. I recommend the Hoppage WinTV 2250 for this purpose. The third situation is if you use a digital cable set-top box or subscription satellite set-top box to watch TV. In this situation, you will need to purchase a TV tuner that has standard composite or S-video inputs, along with what's called an IR blaster, which will be used to change channels on the STB. I also recommend for this purpose the Hoppage, Hoppage WinTV 2250, as it has all the necessary inputs along with an IR blaster to change channels. In general, I would recommend installing at least two TV tuners into your server PC so that you can record one program while watching another, as well as be able to watch two programs on different clients simultaneously. The exception to this rule is if you are using a set-top box to watch subscription cable or satellite television. In this situation, you will need a separate set-top box for each tuner you want to install in your server PC. This can get expensive, especially if you're required to pay a monthly fee for each set-top box. If you can afford it, or if additional set-top boxes are no cost, I would highly recommend installing multiple TV tuners. Next, you will need to put some consideration forward towards the operating system that you will be running on your server PC. For the purpose of this video, I will be using Windows Server 2012 and the free PVR application Next PVR. If you prefer to use another PVR application, that's absolutely okay. There is a multitude of free, and many of them even open source, PVR media centers that will work for this project. One that comes to mind is Media Portal. In terms of operating system, I would recommend that you use Windows, Windows Vista or Windows 7, as both of those operating systems have media codecs present in the OS that you will not find in Windows XP, Windows Server, or Windows 8. You can also use Linux for this project, uh, however, setting up a Linux TV server is a little bit more involved than the process I'm going to be walking through in this video. The first thing you should do is install the software and drivers that are included with your television tuner. This is especially important if you use the Hoppage TV tuner con to control a set-top box, um, as Next PVR will be using the Hoppage application to change channels. 
After you have installed the included software and drivers, add a few channels to verify that the TV tuner is working correctly, and then you can move on to the installation and configuration of NextPVR. When installing NextPVR, accept all the default options and launch the application. Uh, enter the configuration dialog by right-clicking anywhere in the window and select the Devices tab and highlight the tuner that you wish to configure. Click on Device Setup to add more channels. If you are adding over-the-air, free-to-air, or analog cable channels, then you will have the option to scan for signals. If you are using a set-top box to receive television, then you will need to manually add the channels and manually provide the path to the Hoppage IR Blaster executable. Test next PVR on your server PC and make sure that you can receive your channels. If so, then you have successfully configured the server portion of your whole home DVR. Next, you should put some thought towards the network that you're going to be using to connect your media clients to your server. I would highly recommend that you use a cabled network. Gigabit is obviously preferred, however 100 meg should do fine as well. If you don't have the option of running cable to all of your media clients, you can connect them to the network using wireless. However, you should make sure that you're using wireless N that has a throughput of at least 100 megabits per second. The reason for this being that high definition TV streaming requires a lot of bandwidth. After you've finished configuring your PC and put some thought towards the network that you're going to be using in this project, it's time to start configuring clients. Media clients can be many devices, including Android set-top boxes, uh, traditional personal computers, or Apple TV 1s or Apple TV 2s. In this video, I'm going to show you two different media clients, a standard personal computer, as well as a XIOS Android Media Center. I'm going to turn both of them into media clients for Next PVR using the free and open source application XBMC. Let's start with the PC. I'm here at, in the living room of my family's home, the main television viewing point in the house. And I have here an Acer, Revo, an Acer Aspire Revo R3610. Uh, this computer was designed to be a low-power computer for use in a media center application. The computer sports a 1.6 GHz giga, processor, 2 GB of RAM, and a 320 GB hard drive. The first thing that you'll need to do is replace the existing installation of Windows 7, or whatever operating system your PC is currently running, uh, with a customized version of Ubuntu Linux that runs the XBMC Media Center. Uh, in this situation, I will need to use a USB DVD drive to complete the installation, as the Acer Revo doesn't have a DVD reader built in. First, head on over to xbmc.org and download the latest version of the Frodo XBMC Ubuntu release. Burn the disk image that you downloaded to a blank DVD or CD-ROM and configure your PC to boot from DVD. After a few seconds, you should be presented with the XBMC Ubuntu installer, Accept the default options and be aware that XBMC will replace the existing operating system on your PC. So if you have any data or on that PC, you're going to want to make sure you back it up before you proceed with the installation. After the installation is complete, it should, it should only take a couple of minutes, you can reboot the computer and you should be presented with the clean, intuitive XBMC interface. At this point, you're likely using a keyboard and mouse to control XBMC, which works fine, but can be kind of awkward, especially if you're trying to integrate your media center into a traditional television viewing environment. I should note that XBMC works great with almost all Windows Media Center remote controls, like the one I have here. Windows Media Center remote control kits can be had for fairly cheap prices on eBay, and they simply plug into a USB port on the computer, and you control it with a remote control that looks very similar to something else you would find in your living room. It can even be programmed to work with a Logitech Universal Remote Control, which makes life even better. The first thing you will need to do with your XBMC installation is configure it to talk to your next PBR server. Navigate to the Settings screen and then select Live TV. Click on the Enable button and XBMC should prompt you to activate a PBR plugin. Select the Next PBR plugin and select Configure. Input the IP address of your next PVR server and the service port. The port should be 8866 unless you have changed something during the default installation of Next PVR. Enable the add-on and wait while XBMC loads the channels into its database. 
You may now navigate to Live TV from the main menu and watch all the television channels you have added to Next PVR right on your Media Center computer. The next type of device I'm going to discuss is an embedded Media Center whose sole purpose is to act as a Media Center device of some sort. These devices are great to use in a secondary location such as a bedroom or in a situation where not a lot of space is required as they're usually pretty small. In this example, I'm using an XIOS DS Media Play, a box that was specifically designed to run XBMC natively. The XIOS doesn't come with XBMC by default, so you will have to install it manually. You have two choices for installing XBMC. First, you may install XBMC as an Android application by downloading a standard APK file. This will leave Android as the base operating system of this box and allow you to launch XBMC just as you would any other Android application. The second option is to replace the existing Android installation with a version of Linux that has been customized to specifically run XBMC and only XBMC. If you plan on using this box for just for as a media center and don't plan on using a lot of other applications, then I would highly recommend replacing Android with the XBMC Linux version as it runs a whole lot better. Of course, you can always go back to Android later in the future if you don't, turns out you don't like XBMC. I'm going to walk through the installation of, a na of the native Linux installation in this video. After verifying that your XIOS functions properly with the default firmware, connect the HDMI port to your television set. Unplug the box and use a paper clip to gently press the reset button on the bottom of the device. While holding the button down, plug the power adapter into the XIOS and continue to hold the button until the firmware upgrade screen appears. Download the latest XBMC firmware from the PIVOS forums and place the image file onto a micro SD card. After the image file has been copied to your SD card, insert the card into the XIOS box and use the remote control to select Update from SD card. Navigate to the directory that you saved the firmware image and select it. At this point, the firmware will upgrade automatically and the box will prompt you to reboot once it is finished. Rebooting will take approximately one minute, at which point you should be presented with the familiar XBMC interface. At this point, you may add PDR channels exactly as I did on the Media Center PC by navigating to Settings, Live TV, and then following the prompts. In this video, I have walked through some of the basic configuration steps you need to follow in order to set up a basic whole home DVR system. I have shown you how to install Next PBR onto a server PC, as well as XBMC Media Center on two separate media clients. Now that you have the basic system in place, feel free to tweak the system and modify it to your liking. And don't forget about the XBMC and Next PBR forums to continue your learning experience. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting.